Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Mamun Sbeh. I just want to ask uh, or get your perspective on the case for democracy in the Arab world. It hasn't been made. It, it's failed so far. Uh, as Arabs, we, sometimes we tend uh, to blame the, the rulers and the leaders, but in fact, the Arab public hasn't bought it yet. Uh, we see democratic uh, uh, Switzerland banning Islamic uh, you know, minarets. We see Islamic, sorry, democratic Israel doing what it is doing. Even when there is a democratic Palestine, it becomes a Hamas Palestine. So there is a bit of confusion here about democracy and what it can make. How can you make the case for democracy? I think um, our political experience from my country, we, have had, we haven't had any real harsh revolution of any kind during the last 600 years. It has been a fairly peaceful development domestically. We have had a lot of wars, even if the last 200 years we have been at peace completely. It's just in UN missions we have sent out any troops outside the kingdom. I think if one have a functioning democracy, one listen to people, understand people, and if one can't understand, they have a constructive dialogue, then there will be a change of government. And I think this is a civilized way uh, with a constructive dialogue within the country. Of course, I recognize that a democracy can be very different in different countries. The U.S. democracy is not the European democracy, and uh, it could be constructed in many different ways. But it's the will of the people, the freedom of speech, the interaction, that I think is very crucial. And all democracies are not fulfilled from the first day, when you get voting rights and have freedom of speech because you have to educate yourself in respect of opposition, respect for majority, in respect of the democratic institutions. And that may, might take some time. When I say we had the first parliament in 1435, it was not, of course, a democratic parliament. But we believe that something in between 5 and 10 percent of the population had some sort of voting rights. The chief of the city had the place in parliament. It was poor people in the parliament. It was rich people in the parliament. There were priests in the parliament. There were nobles in the parliament. It was some sort of a responsibility for them with the dialogue with the full people. And we were fairly late, as I said, with full, vo full voting rights in 1919. But there was a rather strong dialogue domestically and that, I think, was a very crucial thing for us. Yes, I think there is still a problem on the West Bank and Gaza Strip. It's not easy to create in a very violent uh, surrounding a good working and functioning dialogue and democracy. It takes, you can get it step by step. Everything is not, not changed and not uh, sold in one single step. I think one can see steps in the correct direction in many countries. My parliament is active with the Nordic Baltic countries and the speakers there for trying to strengthen democratic institutions for the time being, especially in Moldavia, Ukraine and Georgia. And we have the Council of Europe working a lot with Eastern Europe to strengthen human rights and democratic institutions. And that is, I think, very, very good, because it means that we perhaps will have constructive democratic neighbors with creation of some sort of wealth, and we have such neighbors who will have a much more secure and peaceful development for the rest of Europe, too, at the same time. It's not a direct answer, but I shan't interfere what every single country should do they must find their way of democracy by themselves. And democracy is not just voting rights, it's respect of other people's will and their views and freedom of speech and even try to learn the history 
and arguments from the op opponents at the same time to have a constructive, good dialogue.